Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to study the Bible, study Psalm, especially the book of Psalms, uh, and this particular Psalm, Psalm number 49, and how important it is that we understand that we don't trust in riches, we trust in the Lord. And uh, we just ask that you bless our time as we look into the Word of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. All right, so <clears throat> um, uh, open your Bibles to Psalm number 49, Psalm number 49. And uh, there is a, the inspired headings, no? Yung mga nakasulat sa ilalim ng number 49, these are inspired headings. They're part of the, uh, 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 the verse 1 in the originals, in, in the Masoretic text, and we acknowledge them as part of the Word of God. So these are not extra words. When you read Psalm, and there's an inspired heading, you include that in verse number one. <clears throat> Psalm 49, verse one, to the chief musician. And we know who the chief musicians uh, are, according to Second uh, <clears throat> Chronicles chapter five and verse 12. And there are many other passages in the Old Testament that explain who the chief musicians were, uh, <clears throat> but uh, they're um, Asaph, Jedithan, uh, who's also named Ethan, same guy, and uh, He-Man, and so on <clears throat> and so forth. But uh, mainly Asaph is who we consider to be the chief musician because he's got a number of psalms uh, in, uh, compared to He-Man and uh, Ethan. So anyway, uh, to the chief musician, so uh, David perhaps composed this or the sons of Korah composed this and hit handed it over to uh, the chief musician Asaph so that he could guarantee that they'll use this psalm uh, as they sing, not for worship, but for um, instruction, for wisdom. So some psalms, a lot of the psalms, are addressed to the Lord, and some psalms are addressed to people, and this is a psalm not for worship, but for wisdom. And so <clears throat> a psalm for the sons of Korah. Now we talked about the sons of Korah before. But, uh, <clears throat> and there's 11, 11 psalms uh, that refer to the sons of Korah. Uh, there's only 11 of those. And uh, we have seen, uh, let's see, seven already. And Psalm 49 uh, will begin to give way to the Psalm of Asaph and then the Psalms of David again. Um, and we won't see the Psalms of, the Psalms of Korah for the sons of Korah until we get to uh, book number three and 84, 85, 87, and 88. So we're in book two right now. With, uh, Psalm, between Psalm 42 to Psalm 72 is book two. The book of Psalms is divided into five books. You should know that if you've been um, paying attention to the, uh, the study of Psalms. <clears throat> There's five divisions, and every division ends with a blessing or a benediction. And uh, we're, in Psalm, we're in book two and Psalm 49. And then uh, we'll proceed next week with Psalm 50, and then the Psalm that great repentance Psalm 51 of David and so on and so forth. The, a lot of David's Psalms are coming back in book number two. Uh, so for book number two, we have uh, seven Psalms of Korah and then the rest picks up in book three later. So <clears throat> the sons of Korah, well, who is Korah? Who is Korah? Well, let's go to Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16. <clears throat> Again, so this psalm helps us to think about uh, not trusting in riches, not trusting in wealth. This is a psalm of wisdom. Uh, it's foolish to trust in money 
uh, without the wisdom of God. And uh, <clears throat> Numbers chapter 16 discusses Korah and his company. So there's about, uh, let's look at that. So, uh, Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16. Now Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi. So Korah was a Levite. He had a responsibility to worship the Lord in the tabernacle. This time there was no temple. <clears throat> Remember, the temple doesn't get uh, uh, built until the time of King Solomon. So during the time of David, Korah was assigned to serve the Lord in the tabernacle under the authority of, of Moses and Aaron. And they are the leaders during this time. And uh, Korah wanted to, to assume authority to himself. He was a rebel. He did not bring himself under authority. He didn't acknowledge God. Uh, number 16, verse 1, and here's other of his companions, other friends besides Korah, and Dathan, and Abiram, these are brothers, the sons of Eliab, and On, so there's, there's four of them, Korah, Dathan, Abiram, On, bunch of rebels. <clears throat> the sons of Pelath, the sons of Reuben, took men. And how many went along with them? Well, verse 2 says 250. And they arose up before Moses with certain children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And so this is significant. These are wealthy men. These are popular men. These are powerful men. And they all gathered themselves, verse 3, they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. Wrong. <clears throat> Rebellion. Mm. <clears throat> the gainsaying of Korah in the book of Jude. Jude, verse number 11, talks about the gainsaying of Korah. The word gainsaying means to speak against, to contradict, to, um, <clears throat> to, to not come under, to be a rebel, a rebellious. And so Korah led uh, 250 plus Dathan, Abiram, and on. So all 254 of them were a bunch of rebels, but they were powerful and wealthy. And uh, God had to judge them. Uh, you're in number 16. Look at, uh, look at verse 26. Numbers chapter 16, verse 26. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. Oh, they were wicked men, rebellious men. And you better get away from them, Moses said. And <clears throat> the sons of Korah, separated. They got away from their wicked daddy and they honored the Lord. And so God, when God judged Korah and those 253 other rebellious men, the sons of Korah were spared. They were spared because they didn't go along with the rebellion of <clears throat> Korah. And now we come to Psalm 49 and you can imagine the sons of Korah thinking to themselves, when you look at Korah, when you look at Dathan, Abiram, when you look at On, when you look at the 250 men of renown and powerful men, no doubt wealthy men, <clears throat> what good is wealth and popularity and renown if you're against God, wealth and renown don't mean anything when you are rebellious against the Lord. So Psalm 49, to the chief musician, a psalm 
for the sons of Korah. And uh, let's look at the outline of the psalm. Pansinin natin yung outline ng psalm na ito. And you see here, <clears throat> there's an introduction, verses 1 and 4. Introduction. This is significant. The introduction um, tells us that this is a wisdom psalm, not a worship psalm. It addresses man, not God. In the introduction, um, David or the sons of Korah are not interested in just talking to Israel. They want to talk to everyone. They're not just interested in talking to the powerful and the mighty and the wealthy. They're interested in talking to the poor. They're interested in talking to Israel and the Gentile. <clears throat> They're interested in the entire world, paying attention to the word of God. And then you look at uh, verse 5 is the main question. And it parallels verses 16 to 20 at the very end where the question is resolved. So the question rendered and the question is resolved. It parallels. Then uh, you have the refrain, the, the important refrain here, verse number 12. Verse 12 and verse 20 match. Magkatugma yung verse 12 at saka yung verse 20. They just about say the same thing. <clears throat> and uh, it, it's a clue as to the breakdown. So certainty of death, verses 6 to 12, death is sure. Whether you have money or not, death is coming. Death is real. <clears throat> and how foolish it is to trust in wealth. So you know you're going to die. So why would you put your trust in wealth? So whether you have wealth or not, you're going to die anyway. And so this psalm directs us to focus in verse 15, but God. Instead of trusting in riches, we should be trusting in the Lord. <clears throat> because whether you have riches or not, you're going to die anyway. So we have the outline of the entire Psalm 49. And so let's look at these sections. Let's begin with the introduction, verses 1 to 4. To the chief musician, a psalm for the sons of Korah. Hear this, all ye people, give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world. So uh, again, the psalmist is saying, pay attention. I have something very important to tell you. And not just Israel, but the entire world, both low and high, rich and poor, together. So... <clears throat> Uh, everybody needs to pay attention to the word of God. Verse number three, my mouth shall speak of wisdom and, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my dark sayings upon the harp. So these four terms, uh, wisdom, understanding, meditation, uh, parable, and dark sayings, these four uh, words um, tell us that the psalmist has something very important to tell everyone and he wants you to pay attention to what he's trying to instruct you what he's trying to teach us pay attention these are uh, psalmist is saying i'm going to be speaking very carefully and i'm going to give it to you very simply so that you don't miss out on this very important topic and what is that topic? You are either trusting in money or you are trusting in the Lord. But you cannot serve money and God. You have to pick one. One has to be Lord over your life. It's either God or mammon or money. And when you think about this world, it's not unusual to, to see that a lot of people follow money instead of following God. <clears throat> they follow their boss instead of following God. They follow uh, man instead of following God. You see, <clears throat> who is Lord of your life? Is it God or is it the love of money? 
And so that's what Psalm 49 is challenging us. And listen to the wisdom of this psalm. Verse number five, verse number five. Here's the question rendered. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity of my heels shall come past me about? So uh, David here or the psalmist, perhaps the sons of Korah, is looking forward to old age. When you get older, it's the days of evil. Iniquity abounds in your heels. Uh, the iniquity of my heels shall come past me about. <clears throat> your heels don't work. Your neck don't work. Your knees don't work. Your muscles don't work. Your health is deteriorating. Uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 old age, uncertain future, rejection of man, fleeting sense of well-being, abandonment from friends and family. <clears throat> There's a lot to fear about the old uh, evil days ahead, but the psalmist is saying, why should I fear? <clears throat> we need to prepare for evil days. And the way to prepare for those evil days ahead is by trusting in the Lord today. Trusting in the Lord instead of trusting and putting our faith and man, or putting our faith in uh, money, uh, the security of money. Oh no, there is no security there. It's fleeting. <laughs> Resources are never enough. <laughs> this is why politicians are liars. <laughs> they tell you, we'll take care of you. <clears throat> we'll give you everything. You vote for us. We'll take care of you. No, <laughs> man cannot take care of fellow man. Sorry. You have to be a fool uh, not to see that. Verse number six, <clears throat> verse number six, uh, the certainty of death. Here's, here's an equalizer. We're, we are all going to face death sooner or later, and it's always sooner. Verse number six, they that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. Oh, listen to the wisdom of the scriptures. Money cannot buy salvation. <clears throat> riches of the world, wealth of the world, boasting in the multitude of riches. <clears throat> That's why we're not impressed with people. We shouldn't be impressed with, with powerful men of renown, hmm, men of popularity, men of means and resources. Hmm. <clears throat> can, can anybody purchase salvation? What is the price of redemption? How much does it cost? Well, in the Bible, the salvation of the soul is redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that price is fixed. You, know, you understand the turmoil of our world today. You know why the world is a mess? Is because prices change. Sometimes uh, meat is expensive, and now it's getting even more expensive. Vegetables, they're never fixed. It's always expensive and even more expensive. <clears throat> Inflation, uh, supply and demand, uh, finances is always shifting and changing. That's why the world is a mess. A politician promises, we're going to give you jobs, we're going to... We're going to fund this. We're going to subsidize that. We're going to take care of this. There, <clears throat> there's never enough money to satisfy the sinful human condition. It's never enough. Mm. It's a bottomless pit. It's almost hellish at times. <clears throat> but what is the price of redemption? That price is fixed. It'll never change. God 
demands the blood of Jesus Christ for the redemption of the soul. Nothing more, nothing less. That's why if you, if you know, if you want to be saved, if you want to be born again, you have to trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. You have to believe on Him alone. Repent of your sin and trust in Jesus Christ only. You can't say, well, I'm going to believe in the Lord and I'm going to pray. I'm going to believe in the Lord and I'm going to do good works. I'm going to believe on the blood of Jesus Christ, but I, I have to pray to the saints. I have to go to church. I, I, I got to believe in the blood of Jesus, but I also need to uh, confess to the priest uh, and uh, be religious. No, the price for redemption is the blood of Jesus, nothing more, but also nothing less. The price of our redemption is nothing less than the blood of Jesus Christ <clears throat> and nothing more. <laughs> so the wisdom of this psalm, how many people brag and boast about their accomplishments? No, this whole life, if you don't know God, this whole life is about boasting on your own ability, boasting in somebody's talent, lifting up man. Hmm. Verse number eight, Psalm 49, verse eight, for the redemption of their soul is precious and it ceaseth forever. The word precious there means uh, valuable. The price of a soul. Hmm. When you think of all the gold and diamond of this world and you put all the money and wealth of the world on one hand and you put the, the price of a soul, the precious soul of a man, one soul, on the other side, you know, in the eyes of God, the soul is heavier than all the gold and riches of this world. This is the wisdom of God. This is how precious your soul is. This is why, you know, Jesus died on the cross because he's the only way to save your soul. And your works, your accomplishments cannot do it. Mm. Verse 9, that he should still live forever and not see corruption. Mm. Verse 10, for he seeth that wise men die. See, even the smartest people die. <clears throat> Likewise, the fool and the brutish person perish. Even the dumbest person dies and leave their wealth to others. Oh, you cannot take your wealth with you. Nobody drives a hearse <laughs> with a, 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 a hitch behind a hearse. Nobody does that. <clears throat> Why? Because you cannot take your wealth with you. Verse number 11, their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever, their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Isn't that funny? Some of the, some of the people are bragging, oh, look at our street. It has our name on it. You know, this street here. Oh, look at this building over here. This is the so-and-so the -so memorial building. You know, this is just such a great accomplishment. Look at man. We're so powerful. Huh. This... This boat is called the such and such a, a captain so and so boat. <laughs> this this uh, you know facility over here, <laughs> this edifice over here, this statue over here. It's always exalting man. Hmm. What a foolishness! What folly! Look at verse twelve. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. Oh, even the most honorable man abides not he's gonna die we're all gonna die i mean that's just the way it is it's part of life is death and the certainty of death that's why we have it here six six to twelve the certainty of death nevertheless verse 12 man being in honor abideth not he is like the beast that perisheth this parallel to verse 20 this is a refrain look at verse 20 Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast that perisheth. <clears throat> so if you, if you 
if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, you're going to die just like an animal dies. You're no different than, a, than a, a sheep for the slaughter or an animal for the slaughter. And so it's foolish, isn't it? It's foolish to live life and to live it up and not think about your soul and not think about God and not think about the great redemption of the soul, the price, the blood of Christ. Uh, <clears throat> here again uh, is the foolishness of trusting in riches, the folly of trusting in riches. Let's look at verse 13 and 14, the next section here. This their way is their folly, yet their prosperity approve their sayings, Selah. <clears throat> Did you get that? The world is saying, man, this is a good guy. Man, this is an honorable guy. Man, this is a su su successful, be successful. <clears throat> but what folly is that? And, and again, the question is asked, what good is man's praises if God condemns you? People will call you good but it won't do you any good if God doesn't call you righteous and good. It's foolishness. Verse 14, like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning and their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. That's the end huh, of, of trusting in money, trusting in riches. The grave, death, you know, <clears throat> some people say, well, well, we're just going to live it up because we will party in hell. Some people say that. <clears throat> even elected officials, even presidents say that. We're, we're all going to have a party in hell. <clears throat> There's nothing more ignorant than that statement. There are no parties in hell. Uh, you can't even get together with anybody in hell. It's the strangest place. It's got fire, but it's total darkness. Total separation from God. But it's flames. It's got flames of fire and your soul will burn in hell for all eternity. And then it's cast into a lake of fire, but it's darkness and there's no getting together. Hmm. Look at verse 16. We'll get to verse 15 as a, uh, at the end. But let's proceed to verse 16 just so that we don't break the thought of, uh, <clears throat> of uh, the folly of uh, trusting in riches. <clears throat> verse 16. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. Hmm? So don't be jealous at the prosperity of the wicked. There's nothing to be envious about that, nothing to be jealous about that. <clears throat> so if they're successful and, and they're doing good uh, with their finances, wonderful, great. Usually though, people are successful because they take advantage of the poor or they take advantage of other people. They're not honest. <laughs> and so <clears throat> should we be af afraid? Should we be jealous? Should we be envious? No especially if you know the Lord as your Savior, you don't have to be jealous and af afraid of wealthy uh, uh, sinners. <laughs> uh, verse number 17, For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. <clears throat> his accolades, his renown, his popularity, his money, it's not going to follow. Verse 18, though while he lived, he is blessed, he blessed his soul, and men will praise thee, again, when thou doest well to thyself. You know, when people do good, men praise you. But what do you want? Do you want man to praise you, or do you want God to commend you? And again, what good is man, man's praise in light of the condemnation of God? 
if you don't take care of your soul through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Verse 19, he shall go to the generation of his fathers. That's saying you're going to die just like your, your fathers died. Hello? <laughs> they shall never see light. Boy, wow. Hmm. When a soul dies and is cast into the lake of fire, the Bible says they shall never see light. Lake of fire and, and hell and the lake of fire, this final judgment from God is obscure. You'll never see light. Boy, what total darkness. And the Bible over and over again calls it outer darkness. Weeping and gnashing of teeth and fire and worms that die not. Oh, this is not a good place to be. And wealth and riches cannot redeem the soul. The Bible teaches that. Verse 20, man, is in the, uh, man that is in honor, understandeth not, is like the beast that perisheth. So if, if man and money cannot save you and cannot redeem you, where should we hope? What should we look for? <clears throat> Verse 15, which is the heart of Psalm 49. Verse number 15. Just like a mountaintop blessing in the Old Testament scriptures, Verse 15, but God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. Oh, can you say what the psalmist says there? God will redeem my soul. See, the psalmist trusted in God, and God becomes his redeemer. <clears throat> Have you been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? Is God your redeemer? Verse 15, hmm? from the power of the grave. Now, how do we know that God has power over the grave? Well, because Jesus resurrected from the grave. <laughs> and so God has power over this. <clears throat> Does man? No. Uh, you know, even if you're the wealthiest person on earth, if it's your time to die, it doesn't matter if you have the shots. It doesn't matter if you have the funds. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you have uh, 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 the world's wealth. Death is sure. And the way to prepare is by not trusting in wealth. That's the dumbest thing or trusting in man. You know, you need to trust in God. But God will redeem my soul. First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 6. So this is my last passage of scripture. Well, uh, as we close this study of the book of Psalm 49, let's look at First Timothy chapter 6. Does the Bible has something to say about money and trusting in money. But First Timothy chapter 6 verse 6 says this, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. This is the wisdom of Scripture. Verse 8, And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. O oh, Christian, the Christian is the only person on earth who knows how to be truly content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation, verse 9, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. The wisdom of Scripture Verse number 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil, while, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And I think of Korah and the gainsaying of Korah. 
I think of how God wanted to take care of Korah and how God wanted to help him. But he rebelled against the Lord, and so God judged him. God judged him. And the sons of Korah uh, separated from their own father to preserve their life and to put their trust in Jehovah God instead of the tents of wicked men, as the scriptures teach us. <clears throat> so, God will redeem those who trust in him from the certainty of death. Trust in God and not in the folly of riches. Trust in God and not in the folly of riches. I hope you can say that. <clears throat> I hope you can truly say that you're trusting in the Lord and not trusting in man. Let's pray and ask God to bless them. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the scriptures. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the wisdom that we find here. Help us to not be impressed with people and their power and their renown and their wealth and popularity. Help us to rejoice that you are almighty God and that your plan for the redemption of the soul is paid for and bought by nothing more and nothing less than the blood of Jesus Christ. Help us to trust in you. Help us to look to you always. Help us to be content in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.